The jewel in the crown of the Basilica of San Clemente is this masterpiece of mosaic art constructed in the 12th century. It's unusual and it doesn't follow Byzantine tradition, which would normally have a representation of Christ in glory or Christ holding a book of the Gospels, but it depicts the crucified Christ, the redeeming Christ. The figure of Christ on the cross is elongated and it looks rather desiccated because he has given himself entirely for the redemption of humanity. In the branches of the tree of the cross, 12 doves are perched, symbolizing the 12 apostles who received the commission to bring the faith to the ends of the earth. And the cross itself reaches from earth to heaven, piercing the skies. So Christ in his own person unites the two worlds of divinity and humanity, time and eternity. Earth unites with heaven in singing the Father's praise. Above the cross, we can see the hand of the Father reaching down with the crown of victory, acknowledging the triumph of his Son over sin and death, proclaiming, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So the cross in this mosaic is the new tree of life, redeeming the sin stemming from the first tree in the Garden of Eden. With the first tree came death, with this new tree comes life. Where it touches the earth, it bursts forth into luxuriant foliage. It's not simply the tree of life, it's also the vine, the true vine that St. John talks about in his Gospel. Its growth is absolutely uncontainable. It spreads all over the apse. And we can see in the branches of the tree, the doctors of the church. At the bottom, we can see ordinary people farmers, people drawing water, a representation of the church on earth, the church which is still on its pilgrimage to the heavenly Jerusalem. And in this mosaic we're shown the way we must journey, taking up our cross to follow Jesus. So the cross is the bridge thrown down for us to make our journey, our exodus of faith, to the life of glory. Now the triumph of the cross has a cosmic dimension. It includes not only all categories of peoples, but also the birds of the air, fish and animals. And at the foot of the cross, the four rivers of paradise flow once more to water the earth. A little deer drinks from the stream, quenching its thirst at the living water that is Christ. So we catch an echo of Psalm 42. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is thirsting for you, my God. So the deer represents the one who truly seeks God, who becomes a member of his body by passing through the waters of baptism. And the little deer is completely oblivious to the dead serpent representing Satan, who lies nearby, because the power of Satan has been broken and the Christian has nothing else to fear. On the triumphal arch surrounding the apse, we get a glimpse into heaven, presided over by the risen Christ who holds in his hands the Book of Life and who is accompanied by the symbols of the four evangelists. At the level below Christ in glory, we see St. Paul with St. Lawrence on the left. St. Lawrence, a Roman deacon and a martyr. And the inscription tells us Paul is teaching Lawrence the way of the cross. On the other side, the right-hand side, are St. Peter and his successor, St. Clement. And St. Peter is making the same gesture St. John does in the crucifixion scene, as he says to Clement, See Clement, Christ whom I promised. And St. Clement holds an anchor, the symbol of his own martyrdom. And below these towering figures of early Christianity come the slightly smaller figures of the prophets of the Old Testament, who testify to the coming of the Messiah, Isaiah on the left and Jeremiah on the right. Each of them look towards Christ and unfolds a scroll with their prophecies of the coming of the Messiah. Now the link between this great assembly of symbols and the sanctuary, the altar beneath, is Christ, the Lamb of God, at the center of a little procession of 12 sheep who make their way from Bethlehem and Jerusalem. The first, the place of Jesus' birth, and the second, the place of his sacrifice. So the Lamb of God is a symbol taken from the book of Revelation, but was also a testimony given by John the Baptist to Jesus when he saw him beside the sea. 
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When Christ, really present under the form of bread and wine, was offered for the adoration of the people, a direct link would be made between the Lamb in the mosaic, the cross above, and the accepting hand of the Father. Earth would be united with heaven. The veil between time and eternity would be drawn apart.